With a report that Madrid is almost completely surrounded by General Franco's army, the center of government hopes in Spain is in Barcelona, probably the only city that isn't immediately threatened by attack. The relative peace that had allowed the Catalan experiment that Ethel had found so fascinating was nearing its end. There is trouble in Barcelona. At 3 p.m. on May 5th, three lorry loads of police made use of the siesta hour to launch an attack on the telephone exchange. They seized the ground floor without difficulty, but our comrades in the building barricaded the stairways and swept them with machine gun fire. The attack in May 1937 on the anarchist stronghold, the telephone exchange, came not from the fascists, but from the communist-backed government. For Stalin, and for the communist movement worldwide, the key and prevailing concern was that, that there could be political alliances and understanding between Russia on the one hand and France and Britain, above all Britain on the other, because Hitler was threatening Russia. So Stalin's vision of what was going on in Spain had less to do with Spain than the broader European situation in which it became critical that Britain would support Stalin against Hitler. Crowds gathered outside the building and the streets were filled with men and women crying, to the barricades, to the barricades. The police had used sandbags and bricks intended to repel Franco's attack, but our anarchist comrades tore up loose paving stones to build their own barricades. At that stage, the dominant element in the power system of the Republic was communist, or close to communist, and they hated the anarchists with an absolute passion, and uh, they simply used their power to crush the uh, Barcelona working classes and the anarchist movement with quite a lot of violence. There was electricity in the air. All during the night there was firing in the street. We had a good view from our window. They wanted us to stay inside, but we left the building and made our way to the CNT headquarters. It begins with an argument about whether to have a May Day demonstration, and then on 3rd of May, the head of security in the Catalan government and the home secretary in that government send troops to the telephone exchange in the Plaza de Catalunya in central Barcelona to drive out the trade unions who at that time are controlling the telephone exchange. The firing became terrific. The police were firing from their building in nearby houses and the CNT were applying from inside their headquarters at the telephone exchange which the anarchists had occupied. The gunfire crossed from the balconies over the Plaza Catalunya from the Cologne Hotel, the Socialist Party HQ. The noise is terrible. Already many have been killed and wounded. In a sense, the telephone exchange was very symbolic. The telephone exchange was run by the workers in the telephone exchange. And the argument was that they listened in to ministerial conversations. Now, you can imagine what mayhem that could cause if you actually heard what politicians say to each other. But more importantly than that, that was symbolic, really, of the extent to which workers' organizations still controlled things. So sending troops against the workers was a demonstration to the outside world that they would not allow a revolution to happen in Spain with all the consequent repercussions with the rest of Europe. But there is another third way to value what the fact of the fact of the fact, and that is that the minorities the most radicalized of the CNTFI supposed to the direction of the CNTFI and a la política que havíem fet de col·laboració amb els governs. Per tant, tenim davant de nostre diverses possibilitats. Un punts comunista, un punts dels republicans o bé les pròpies minories radicalitzades anarquistes que suposen els seus dirigents. But for the ordinary soldier, the political divisions weren't necessarily so obvious or clear cut. The interesting thing is, I've never heard my father say anything about, you know, judging whether anarchists, PUM, the socialists and so on were right or wrong. I mean, I think he was a member of the Communist Party, but he went there to fight Franco, and he went there because he did see this as a dress rehearsal for a greater, a larger a, a struggle. In the taller where I worked, you understand, there was no problem, because some of them were full of OGD and so on. It's not that I felt, it's that there was no problem in the seno of the Committee of Control for the fact of belonging to one organization or another. In the midst of the street fighting, Ethel managed on May the 8th to get out one last dispatch from Barcelona. She sent it to Aldred, who published it in the Barcelona Bulletin on the 15th of May. 
We were preparing for attack. Men barricaded windows. Women dragged out cases of ammunition. Machine guns were mounted. We knew what was coming. I set out at seven. At that hour, Spanish women go to the market. Both sides knowing this, look out for them and cease fire to allow them to move about. We mingled with these women, some of whom carried little white flags in their hands. We would slink along a street, hugging a wall. Sometimes firing went on above our heads, aimed at the windows, showers of plaster falling about our ears. This way, we eventually reached the Via de Ruti. We chatted with a comrade while we waited for a lull in the fighting. Five minutes later, we saw him fall. This was our life for the next three days. We busied ourselves filling cartridges for the soldiers and preparing food for them. At mealtimes we felt that all the food was needed for them, and we had our meals in a little restaurant a few streets away that had remained open for us. At the barricades we watched the soldiers and police drag easy chairs out of nearby buildings and sit smoking till it was time to start firing again. They seemed to take things as coolly as that. We saw 12 comrades dragged from their car and shot. When the ambulance people tried to get to them, they were ordered back and told if they went to these men, they would be fired upon. Our comrades did not want to kill people and they withheld the fire as much as possible, contenting themselves with defence. Dead and wounded lay between the barricades, wrecked cars in every other street. Hardly a pane of glass was left in a window. All the street lamps were shattered. Walls were wrecked by bombs. As soon as the fighting stopped, wives and mothers hurried through the streets searching for their loved ones. The streets were filled with fear-stricken and frenzied women. A partir del 6 de maig, el que sí que queda clar és que la CNDFI ja no formarà part fins al final de la guerra en els governs ni de la Generalitat ni a Madrid. Però també significarà per als militants més radicals de la CNDFI un període molt negre. És el període d'empresonament, és el període d'assassinats, és el període de reclusió de 3.700 anarquistes en les presons i en els camps de treball que s'instal·len a Catalunya durant aquest període. Per tant, entrem en una etapa molt dura, molt dura, pels propis anarquistes. La conspiració ja venia de lejos i no eren només els comunistes, eren també, comprendeix, tots que querien terminar amb el PUM i querien terminar també amb la CNT. Acabaren, bé, sí, amb la revolució. Per quatre dies hi ha lluitat, a l'inici de la qual els revolucionaris, els més radicals, els més determinats lluitats contra el fascisme, are arrested by their erstwhile allies and colleagues, jailed, in some cases tortured, in some cases killed. After the events of May 36, Ethel's voice was no longer heard on the airwaves, nor was there any news of what had become of her. A mesura que la guerra es va perdent, a mesura en que cada vegada més la república depèn del subministrament d'armament que procedeix, que ve de Moscou, la justícia republicana i la rereguarda republicana es militaritza. Què vol dir això? Vol dir que la república, davant d'aquesta situació tan tensa, el que fa és militaritzar tots els elements, és a dir, des de la justícia, passant pels tribunals, passant per les lleis, etc. I per tant la justícia passa a ser una justícia molt arbitrària. És a dir, els processos que es fan, aquí se'n diuen fotomaton, de justícia ràpida i expeditiva, i moltíssima gent anirà a parar a les presons i els camps de treball que s'instal·len sense les més mínimes garanties processals ni legals. Why they didn't arrest me immediately and have done with it, I couldn't work out. Later I discovered that they had already arrested so many British subjects that they were afraid to arrest me. Apart from making representations for other prisoners to the authorities, who hated me, there was little I could do. On several occasions,